everyone, Father God, who has chosen to speak in their hearts, Father God, to honor you. We thank you for that moment, Father God, and the blessing. We are grateful unto you for giving us such a moment to be able to bring our gifts and offering, Father God. Blessed is those who give than those who receive. Father God, we believe in your word where it says that we shall be blessed. So this morning as we gave, blessings are coming to us. We are opening the windows and the gates of heaven for those blessings as they pour unto us week after week, month after month, year after year. We release those jobs, we release those monies, we release those invoices, we release all those payments. In the name of Jesus, we receive. Bless you, Lord. Thank you.
Come on, talk to him, talk to him. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord this morning. In the Rebe Seke Mamosi and Arabasaka Mamosia. 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 In the Rebe Seke. In the Rebe Seke Mamosi and Arabasaka Mamosia. In the Rebe Seke Mamosi and Arabasaka Mamosia. In the Rebe Seke Mamosi and Arabasaka Mamosia. In the river, Seke Mamosi on Dorobo Seke, in the river Seke, Yandaraba Saka Mamosi on Dorobo Seke Mamosia, in the river Seke Mamosi on Dorobo Seke, in the river Sianda, Riba Kandaraba Saka Mamosi, in the river Seke. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, Saka. Satane uya tu tu yetra mo ya yetra mo vitwele usikuta zetanda sweni. You may take your seats. Greetings in the name of Jesus. San Monani. Yan bigele la nongi kamelengo se tu Jesus. Amen. We thank God this morning for being with us. He has carried us as a figure. Amen. He really carried us, Bazalwane. Amen. Some of us were not supposed to be here, but the Lord carried us. The Lord carried us. Amen. We're supposed to be so frustrated, but the Lord carried us. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the blessings of the Lord are good. They leave no sorrow with them. Something and it ends up frustrating you to the point of sorrow because his blessing is good. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are yes and they are yes. amen. The only challenge sometimes that we have is that we take too long before we go to God and tell him about the blessing that he has given us. The Lord might have blessed you with a husband and you take too long to go to him with the island of the Anglopa. You take too long to say, I love Fazio Anglopa. Because the blessing of the Lord, it does not leave any sorrow with it. Amen, Bazalwan. You take too long to say, and it's a blessing of the Lord. You must go to him quickly. And say, You take too long to, to go to the Lord about the job that is beginning to frustrate and say, Lord, the blessing that you have given me, it's, it's behaving outside the scriptural context. Please assist Mokshesha. You last that scripture that says, come quickly, come quickly, Lord, come quickly. So you need to go to the Lord quickly. The problem is that you want to explore too many options before you go to God. You should have started with the Lord. He should have answered you quicker. Because the Bible says, Daniel, 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 immediately after you prayed, I've heard your prayers and I, and I answered them. Unfortunately, I had to send an angel to conquer for you, because in transit, while the prayer was in transit, while the answer was in transit, the devil tried to intervene. But we know that the Lord can send a powerful angel. Amen. So this morning, I'm happy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful day. We're going to our Passover feast. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So this is our annual thing as the church globally. This is, these are the times that unite the church globally. The entire church, whether you're in America, in China, whether you're in a secret church in China or secret church in Northern Korea. You know, there are still secret churches there in some of these countries like Northern Korea where Christians are hiding themselves. But during this time, we're going to have a pilgrimage 
and we are going to remember the Lord. Amen, Barcelona. We remember that he died because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So we know that because of his blood that was shed for us, our sins were forgiven. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So I want to invite you all, Barcelona, to participate in our pilgrimage. It's going to be lovely. It's going to be beautiful. So Izaning Amandla, Izaning Obinini, We'll try to set up an overflow somewhere along a pond, put some screens for those who can't enter in the building. Amen and Bazalwane. And then we do have screens, like for instance, in our mother's room, if you're having a small child, a little baby, we have a, a safe space for our mama. Banga keep in in peace that side, you know. Uh, it's a safe space for our mama Bangalisayo. Uh, it's a safe space for our mama or having babies, and it's a safe space for the kids. And they can see us. Uh, hello. <laughs> they are looking at us, that side. And we're also having a, a space for children in our church. We have a children's church. We've got about three or four classes, that side. We divide them according to ages. Amen, Bazana. So, um, are now under the age of 12, uh, would find more benefit, that side. Uh, the kids... Who are very young, about nine years old, eight years. Who are about how much? Who are big? Who are about how much? But all in their kids, they must go that side uh, in the future. Uh, Ninga sabi, just register them properly so that in case anything happens to the child, we can flash it here and show you that you're gonna something that you need to go and attend to your child, or so that we can be able to manage the access. We don't want people to come and take kids that are not theirs. That's right. That's why we're having a registration process. Yeah, I want to repeat what Sister Tuli said earlier. It's important that we need to cooperate. We need to cooperate. You've registered the child that site. Who's the manager? Isn't okay. Amen, Bazalwan. That's why even when we take our offering these days, we are trying to make sure that there's order and there's nothing wrong that happens while we are taking offering and our guys with guns are ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we want to shoot the wrong person. <laughs> That's why these days they say, take, take your seats and they sing nicely. We're trying to manage things. There must be order in the house of the Lord. We have seen churches being uh, ransacked by crime. Amen, Bazalwane. So that's why we manage things, close our gates, manage stuff. Bob Kumalo and the people there by Enzintoyabo. And we manage things. We can't be undermined by kids uh, okay. in our community. Amen. Amen. So it's very important that we must manage stuff. Uh, so, amen. But uh, it's important that we do that. Let me do one last thing before we go to the word. We are populating the evangelical evangelism and outreach team. Evangelism and outreach team. It's led by or oh, they're still that side. Are yeah, they back? Okay, they're still working yeah, on the other side. They're leading our evangelism and outreach team. Our evangelism and outreach team does a few things. They do hospital visits. They coordinate that work, and they also go there physically themselves in times where they are not going with the entire church. They also coordinate like um, prison visit, they coordinate outreaches, they coordinate church invitation programs, the ones where we're inviting the community to come to church uh, so that we can have visibility of our church. frustrated So they will coordinate those particular efforts. They also coordinate what we call Jesus on the street ministry, where we go as a church together and then we do church on the street and then we preach there and the like. So we're looking for volunteers. We do have a few volunteers, but we are looking for volunteers to join our ministry, evangelism, and outreach in the church. So it's a call I'm making. If you corner, you are now already a member of the church, and uh, you want to join the, the, the evangelism and uh, uh, outreach ministry of the church, I would like to see you by showing hand. Is there any person like that? Ufunuk Joyna, that ministry. I see one. 
I see two. I need about, I see three. I need about 10 people to join to add to our team there. Uh, we need young people, old people. We need a mixture of people. I think we need young people for their strength. We need a to have a assist. We need old people so that we can also engage. We must invite old people to church. It's such embarrassing to find that there's a family, the entire family of Akons. So we need old people to be able to send a value proposition of the Lord to those people. We need that relative, but it's but it's, 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 what's this English word? We need people to be able to see people that they can relate with. That's why there must be all ages in this, in this, in the, in this ministry. It must not be just children. They must also relate with older people to be able to preach the gospel. Majority of the time, this team will coordinate the work and the church in its entirety will participate. Can I see the hands again? Uh, thank you very much. Can I ask that when the church finishes... You see, Ubabu Uruma, I'll call him immediately after Sikret Tukshumayela again so that everybody who's volunteering can just go to him. They take your details and begin to have meetings. And Basavin Sane Ganyanan, Nzela, especially Zandla Bonke, those who are volunteering. We are in a season where we are talking about becoming an impactful church. You remember what we're calling ourselves as a church, Lighthouse Community Center, we call ourselves an impactful community of faith. What do we call ourselves? An impactful community of faith. Let's say it. An community. Let your light shine. Yes, sir. <laughs> we are an impactful community of faith. That's what we are. But we need to strategically position ourselves to realize that vision. That's why I've been talking about these things to say that what are the characteristics of an impactful community of faith in society? Uh, you know, when you read that scripture, the biggest thing that worries me, especially in, 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 in chapter four, it's when the Bible says, if you are not working hard and if you are not successful, you're going to make the world to undermine your faith. I'm paraphrasing that text, but that's the context of it. It says, will make the world to undermine the faith. So that's why it's important for us to be well coordinated. It's important for us to be, to be organized, to also emulate these values and these characteristics that the Bible says we must emulate. Otherwise, the gospel is going to be embarrassed because of our own negligence. So I hope we don't have negligent people in the house. I hope we're having learners, people who are learning. Uh, that's why it's important to consider the things that Mumfudis is saying these days, especially when he says the reason why we are forced to teach about money, about giving, is that if we don't do it, we may find ourselves being responsible in front of God for making his people to suffer. Because some of the suffering is informed by lack of giving. So, we don't want to get to the Lord and then be asked to account where God is going to say, okay, you thought this thing is about you. You thought it's about your lifestyle and you've forgotten my people. No, 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 we can't. We want to be able to be honest in preaching the word of God, which is unadulterated. It's part of our objectives as a church to say that we need to teach the word which is unadulterated so that when we can because we know we are going to account, and the Bible says we, as the ministers of the word, we are going to account even more, 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 worse than everybody else who is the flock. Because we are shepherds, we are expected to know better. So if we become selective in which gospel we should preach to the people of God and we forget to preach the critical things according to the word. We may find ourselves in trouble as people of God. So, as Funi Uti, Utupol, 
angifuni ukuthi masengibasindisile bonke bese mina nyasala in simple terms he says i don't want when after i've helped everybody and i be left outside i think it's a it's a big challenge to everybody who is a preacher of the word so even ourselves as a family that god has called to preach the word we don't want to find ourselves outside can i hear you say amen, amen. that's why it's important then that as we give the precepts we must also encourage practice because giving just precepts without encouraging practice is going to make us a very theoretical church without any fruit because while we are saying it's precept upon precept it must lead to practice because I know we call this thing doctrine doctrine must lead to duty so if you're going to come with just doctrine and precepts upon precepts without duty without practicals then you're going to have a problem as the people of God can i hear you say amen so moral obligations must follow the doctrine we must talk about the proper doctrine balanced doctrine but we must also emphasize on the moral obligations that those who are taught should be able to then exercise because if we are going to only embrace teachings and they become head type of teachings but they are not emulated in our value system which can only be seen through practice then we are having a serious problem as a church can i hear you say amen that's why today I want to talk about you know <laughs> I thought I was done with the book of uh, Thessalonica ne I wanted to move on and the Lord said no you have not spoken about two things two which I found there He said you have not spoken about about holiness and you have not spoken about the return of Christ Because you can't finish the book of Thessalonica without talking about holiness and without talking about the return of Christ a hopeful church that's hoping that when he returns they'll be like him and i said okay i'm going to talk about the return of Christ during the passover but i'm going to talk about holiness today that's why if those who are asking what is our topic for today it's an impactful church but the subtopic is walking in purity Come on say walking in purity. Bakona. Ah, bantu ba matoto. These Christians are amazing. Walking in purity. <laughs> so, that's what I want to talk about. Let's go to the word and talk about the word of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and then we're going to read from verse 1 to 8. If I had time, I would also read uh Acts chapter 15, but I don't have time today. Uh First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1 to 8. Ntano ukubonga bonke abazalana no participated in the fasting and prayer. You know we're focusing our attention on praying for the church because sometimes we are so absorbed in praying for ourselves in such a way that we forget this thing that has made us all together together which is the body of Christ. So we've prayed for pastors fraternals the church globally. I feel satisfied that at least we've mentioned the things in the holy of holies simjeli luthixo nge state of the church simjeli luthixo ukuthi sicela asenzele ini nga this church and the other churches in the world we are also praying for the move of the holy spirit in our lives personally in the church that the holy spirit may move in our country because there is a tendency of thinking the holy spirit is just a small 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 wind that can blow in a particular area yet the bible tells us that when the entire earth was formless the holy spirit could cover the entire earth by his move so the holy spirit can cover the ground he can cover big places he's not a holy spirit that's limited to just one congregation that's why we must be careful about the the the, the sermons which are congregation limited because we are not only operating in a congregation we are operating in the entire body of christ that's i have a right to speak to a church in china as a man of god yeah. i'm not only speak, because i'm part of the body i'm not just part of this congregation i'm part of the entire body of christ ngakhuza noma yini ngibonetsa kane oyeduduza 
or a David Tone, wherever. So I'm not just limited. <laughs> just like any other pastor. Because the child of God, the man of God, is called for this body as well. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So let's read. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, we instructed you to live in order to please God. As in fact, you are living. We are sure you are police. Would you have instructed you to live for God? But I, but you are living for God already. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. Live for God more and more. Live according to how it pleases the Lord more and more. Live in a manner that pleases God more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Come on, say, it is God's will that I should be sanctified. That you should avoid sexual immorality. The Bible says, <laughs> it's like it's saying, this thing is inherent that there is sexual immorality around you. But as a child of God, avoid it. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Clearly, the Bible is saying there are those who are controlling their body, but they are not controlling it in a way that is holy. And they are not controlling in a way that is honorable. They are controlling their body. Say, I'm going to buy a chima every day. But it does not mean it's a holy way and it's honorable. There are those who are controlling their body. You can hear them. You, you, you can say they are controlling their body. But the, the, the question is, is, are they controlling it in a holy? Are they controlling it in an honorable way? We can see there are those who are controlling their body, doing many, many, many wrong things in this world. The way that you a corner, you can see they can control their body. They know how to tell it to go left, to go right, to go down, to go up. But the question is, are they doing it in a holy or in an honorable way? The Bible says, avoid sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy. Control it, yes. But How? Kuna lendo tava the king of squats. Where has lendo? He's controlling the body, <laughs> but I'm not sure whether it's holy and honorable. <laughs> the Bible says, "Not in a passionate lust like pagans." Literally, don't do it in a passionate lust like abachete ni, because there are many who are doing it like in a passionate way. Have you heard when people talk about passion? It's pushy passion. Yamaza. <laughs> the Bible says, be careful what type of passion you are pushing. <laughs> I had uh, one old video of Pastor Twala where he was talking about Ama Beats to say that we need to be careful what beats. Uh, he says they come with laptops. <laughs> Pastor Twala is a friend of mine, I'm sure. That's a very old video. <laughs> it's a very old video. It says, they come with laptops. Put them on my beats. <laughs> because I know we need to be careful. Because there are certain things that people get through inspiration of the devil. So you need to be careful. I think that's what Pastor Twala is addressing to say. Be careful of what you bring into the house of the Lord. Don't bring some cups from hell and say they look good to worship God with. Be careful. Not everything is applicable in the house of the Lord. It may look okay out there. But the question is why are we doing it? Is it in line? <laughs> so the Bible is talking about these passions. To say that be careful about passions. We don't just do copy and paste of every passion. There are passions we don't want here. Because they, are not, they don't belong to God. It's inspiration from the devil. We don't want it here. That's why we're going to our phone, because they're inspired by sexual desires from the pit of hell. That's why there's, a, there's certain dressing codes 
We must not accept in the house of the Lord because they are, they are inspired by fashion designers of the devil. They know what they want to showcase. These fashion desires of the devil. So be careful. Not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. So the Bible is trying to tell us that we must do things like we know God. And that in this matter, no one should wrong or take advantage of any brother or any sister. I'll talk about that. It's important to, to consider. The Lord will punish all those who commit such sins as we told you and warned you before. Because there is this new gospel that seems to be suggesting that the Lord will not punish anyone. But the Bible is clear. The Lord will punish you if you do these sins that the Bible says you must not do. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Can you stand up on our feet and say these words together as the church? I want you to say it with confidence. Say, God, God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. God did not call us to be impure, but he has called us to live a holy life. Let's sit down. Let me complete. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being but God. The very God who gives you this, who gives you his Holy Spirit. So the Bible says anybody who rejects this teaching, this doctrine, and who does not practice it, is not rejecting the man of God, is not rejecting the apostles, is not rejecting the friend who's trying to warn him, is not rejecting the parent who says stop doing these things, but is rejecting God himself. Because everybody who articulates a view in support of God is doing it on behalf of God, whether it's your parent, whether it's your teacher, whether it's whosoever that is seeking to stand in a moral ground and say, stop doing these things that you are doing. That person is speaking on behalf of God. I saw a very bad funeral the other time on Facebook of one Mapiano person from Soshanguve. I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know how people have degenerated to that level. And it's unfortunate that you find people here in Easter and they see this nonsense happening in Soshanguve. It's just like how it started in Atridgeville, this thing of the Venture Boys. When there was a funeral, they take off their clothes, they become naked, they, die, they dance on top of ventures. And then we started this thing, sing it, spreading all over the place. It was way back in the 80s where there was Stuetla from Soweto. Where people, then it started coming to all our places, Stuetla. Because that's how immorality spreads in society. Yeah. We've seen it in the political environment where, where people were doing protests of nakedness. About mama. Like people who are supposed to lead their families. They participate in this protest and they take off their clothes. We've seen this nonsense happening and we kept quiet as a church. And then you find some of you who are now activists. When these fellow comrades of yours do these things, you also join in this nonsense. But Paul is saying to the church, he's talking to the church, let me give you the historical context why Paul had to tell these people uh, in Thessalonica not to do these things. It's because Thessalonians, Thessalonica was a, a mix type of a community which was having Greek culture, the Roman culture, and then it was having a lot of pagan culture. You remember that Paul was a preacher to non-Christians, non-Jewish non people mostly. He was preaching to non-Jewish, the pagans. And then he was leading them to Christ. Unfortunately, there were so many cultures which were so deep in those communities. The biggest culture was informed by the religion of the time which they were practicing. There was a, a religious practice in, in Thessalonica. That religious practice was about prostitution. 
They were using prostitutes as objects of worship when they were worshiping their gods. I'm sure you've seen this nonsense as well. There's these people who think they can call themselves Christians. But it's a, it's a, it's a here in South Africa, a, a, a church of alcohol. But the Kabula church. That nonsense is not church. That demonic thing is not a church. That evil thing is not a church. That devilish thing is not a church. But that man wants us to believe that there can be a Kabula church. They just come and they drink and they worship the Lord drunk. What's next? Most there's going to be a Nyaupe church. It's not what you call it, it's what it is. Because you can call something a church which is not a church. That Kabula thing is not a church. So, even in Thessalonica, there were things that, like these people used to call their temples, the temples of their gods. And what they used to use, they used to use sex as a way of worshipping their gods. Because that's how bad the devil is. The Bible says in John 10, 10, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when the devil is determined to kill and destroy you, he will take you into such places. So these people, they, they had, it's just like this new discussion which is happening there in Europe. Europe is so evil sometimes. You know that it was first Europe that had a, what they call these things, the red zones. There's a country there in Europe where there's a red zone area where you can just watch naked people having sex in the windows like you're doing shopping. You can just smoke any drug that you want. As long as you're in the red zone, you're fine. It's been happening for years. Then it started in the 80s again in Europe, that thing. There's a new thing that is being discussed in European countries. A few years ago, during COVID, Europe, one of the European countries adopted a law to allow human beings to marry their animals. But we am trying to Bobby. It's European countries that came with those things. And then you're beginning to see this spirit coming all over the place. There's a new discussion now about pedophiles. They are saying, this suggestion that they are discussing in that country, they are suggesting that we must normalize pedophilia. That an old man can look at a kid and say, cute kid. They want to legalize pedophilia. You see how bad the devil is? I don't want to talk about the other things. We've been talking about them. <laughs> what the devil does when he wants to capture a nation, he makes sure that those who are in senior positions, they do that sin. And then when they've done that sin so comfortably, then they want to regularize it through legislation. We've seen it in our country where some of the people in power, they've allowed things like abortion to be normalized in our country. Where some of the, the sexual choices and lifestyles which are against the Bible have been normalized because it started by, you know when you begin to hear stories about some of the leaders, you say, oh, you no know, leader so and so and is in this lifestyle. Then you begin to see how these submissions came to be on the table. Because they wanted to normalize their private iniquities to be public iniquities. Because when the devil is done with you privately, he wants to take you and display you in public. That's how the devil works. He starts by enticing you. He makes this thing look normal to you. He makes it part of your lifestyle for you. And then after that, he takes you out of the secret. He displays you in public. And then he destroys you. Don't you know that those he wants to destroy, he starts by making them crazy first. That's why in Thessalonica, there were these practices which were happening in these temples. And then when these Christians got saved, some of them could not leave the things that they had normalized as normal. 
Is this like Ukchinja Umzulu? No muntu umtonga from polygamy. No masega sin They still see it as because where they come from it was normalized. It was normalized, Wood. Nungos Kazwa. It's even worse when you hear Christians saying, even Christians are discussing with their wives to get the second wife. That thing is madness, let me tell you, as a man of God. Because the question should always be what is the motive for it? Once you judge the motive, you can judge the action. It's just like when you want to judge whether masturbation is a sin or not. Check the motive. Since the motive is wrong, the action is wrong. Amen. I'm not saying a person cannot be saved while they are in a polygamic relationship. They can. It is what it is. They are in that situation. But I've never had any apostle in the Bible who then said, let us start new kind of these polygamic relationships as part of the church. No. I know it's just like when you, when you get saved being divorced. The Bible accepts who does also to see you well, divorcee, you have remarried. We will never come in the church and say divorce is not a sin. It is a sin. But the question is whether, is, is it a sin that can be forgiven or not? Yes, it's a sin that can be forgiven. That's why when people, after they've divorced, we help them to reconcile with God so that at least God can forgive that sin. But it's not a question of saying that we are saying it's not a sin. It's a sin to divorce. It's wrong to divorce. The Bible says God hates it. We're not going to come here and rewrite the Bible. The Lord has spoken. That's it. It settles it. I'm even talking to you who's contemplating it. I'm not saying <laughs> there are no reasons. The Bible, for instance, it gives avenues. It says if there's adultery in that marriage, it does not say if there's an adultery, you must leave your person. But it says at least it's one of the reasons you can use to divorce. It's a good reason to divorce. But it does not mean you must divorce your person just because there's adultery. You can always talk about it and sort this thing out and help the other partner from this adult, a stop, and then we consolidate the family, we move forward. I'm trying to talk about online. But there was a historical context, like I'm explaining, why Paul then ended up talking to this church about these sins that he's talking about. The, maybe the, the first thing is that God has a standard. Come on, say God has a standard. God has a standard. He's, he has a standard that he expects from us. He has a standard. There's a tendency of people who think God does not have a standard. Anything, anything goes. No, it's not true. God has a standard. God has parameters. There are things the Lord says can be done, and there are things the Lord says cannot be done. And that's it. <laughs> Is it like Just because the narrative is becoming popular in society does not mean it's in line with the word. No, it's not in line with the word. The Lord has a standard. The Lord has spoken and that's it. He says, That's it. The Lord has spoken. We can't have a salon so to give pants about the culture. It's against the will of God. That settles it. The Lord has spoken and that's it. 
Agnam Zalon was Panther. Agnam Zalon, oh, Bona, oh, your Bona, oh, your Shola. That's it. That settles it. Because the Bible says Saul did it and the Lord rejected him. That's the word and that settles it. God has a standard. God has a standard for family. He has decided that only a man and a woman would be married. That's it. God has spoken. Amen. If you want to come with a different suggestion, that's your business. You will deal with it with the Lord. The Lord has spoken. No human being must sleep with an animal. That's God's standard. That settles it. That's it. It's a standard of God. God has a standard. It's always too good to note that thing, that God has a standard. When the Lord says, you must not be a drunkard as a child of God, it's a standard of God. Christians cannot be drunkards. That's it. We close the book. It's an amen after that. So I know those of you who want to argue with me say, okay, maybe then I must know the limit. Yes. But the question is, should you get to a standard where you are drunk, you have sinned, that's it. You must repent. God has a standard. Jesus has a standard. He says if you look at a woman and you desire her, who's not yours, you have sinned. He says you don't even need to sleep with her, but you look at her in that manner. You must be like Job. Job says, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look at a woman in that manner. That's God's standard. That's it. We close it. God has a... So it's important that the Bible says it is God's will that we should be sanctified. The Bible says those who know that when Jesus comes back, they'll be like him. They forever sanctify themselves. I'm sure you know, uh, you remember, we always talk about three things when we talk about sanctification. There is what we call positional sanctification. There's what we call progressive sanctification. And there is prospective sanctification. Positional sanctification is that is what we call justification. Is that when you are saved, you are 100% saved. You are clean 100% positionally, but not actually. And so we know that even as we are here, we are seated on the right hand of the Father with Jesus, right? Positionally. We were saved and then we were positioned. However, there's what we call progressively which is what we call sanctification, that progressively you must change, you must become better. That's why we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, not the fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, which has many elements. So, as a Christian, you must begin to show forth these different elements of the fruit of the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is the things that we must see when the Holy Spirit is in you. Because when you get saved, the Holy Spirit becomes like in you, automatically, automatically. However, as you get the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you get to be anointed, then you begin to show forth the elements of the fruit of the Spirit, which is joy, which is peace, which is kindness, which is gentleness, and all these other ones, which is self-control, which is all these things that the Bible talks about. But they must show forth progressively. There is no one Christian who can do sin. Imagine, imagine if you planted a tree, suddenly it has fruit. You'll be so shocked. You know how say, this is an abnormal tree. So even your tree, I planted a, a, a pomegranate tree in my house two, two years ago. For the last two years, it never gave me a, a fruit. But suddenly this year, I started to see these, these fruits. I've eaten four of them so far. <laughs> I bought a Moringa tree the other year. I think it was four years ago. I, for, I even forgot what tree this was. <laughs> and then this tree grew and then started having these things. I wanted my garden guy to cut it and the next one he was, hey, neighbor, don't cut that thing. 
It's very fruitful, that one. It's a moringa. So, okay. I have a moringa tree in my family, in my, in, in, in my yard, which I planted a few years ago. Because that's what progressive, progressive sanctification is all about. Over time, the more you become committed, the more you get the water, the more you eat the word, the more you fellowship, the more you get active, you begin to show forth the fruit elements of the Holy Spirit. So then we've got this one which is called prospective sanctification. Which is, it, it's the condition of the future of believers. We know that in, when the Lord comes and fetches us, we're not going to be in the same bodies. We're going to have perfect bodies. That's our fruit, that's our future, future sanctification of the Lord. Can I hear you say amen? amen. So the Bible says we must avoid sexual immorality. Meaning that we need to avoid any sex standard which is outside the standard of God. Whether it's the biology that tells you to go for it or not, if it's not in line with the standard of God, you must move away from it. I've answered that question that you're asking me, Angish. Because there are many people who say, no, but the body itself. It's the one that makes me go for this type of people. If it's against the will of God, and the Lord has spoken about it, to say only a man and a, and a woman will marry. If when you now saying woman and a woman, man and a man must marry, you must know it's outside the will of God. So you must fight that thing. You must ask for God's grace to help you. So that you cannot be in line with those things. Number two. The Bible says, do not do things like Gentiles are doing things. I, I've been explaining this thing. There's a way that Gentiles do things. There's a way that Gentiles do dating. You know, way back in the 80s, they used to say, How do you buy a pig while it's in the back? They used to say those things. Because they are the Gentiles, they, they speak like that. Tina, as people of God, we trust God about it. We trust God that if the Lord said we must marry, we're not going to be shocked when we are married. But also, even if I'm shocked in my marriage, the Lord is going to give me grace to live with this person that I've married. So we're not doing the things that the Gentiles do. Because of listening to Gentiles at school. They will accuse them, oh, show me. You have not tasted it, show me. You must say, yes, I'm a child of the Lord. I am a proud, not touched. <laughs> but the problem is that most of the Christians have decided to follow the way of the world, the way of the Gentiles. Yet the Bible says in this verse 4, it says, do not follow the way of the Gentiles. You must follow the way of the Lord because the Lord is faithful. He will never make you do something without paying you back. So there is a price, there is glory in living holy for the Lord. There is glory in living holy. So the Bible says, do not be like Gentiles. The Gentiles, that's what the Gentiles say. They encourage promiscuity, these Gentiles. That's why a person who wants to be a Christian and then wants to encourage this thing of polygamy must tell me where the promiscuity is right now. Because if polygamy starts by being unfaithful to your wife, then polygamy is wrong. But if your wife is so foolish that she's willing to do the things that the people, the wives of the noble wives are doing in such a way that now she's being suggestive of these wrong things, you must know you're having a very bad wife. Because I've heard others saying, no, it's my wife who wants it. No, no, no. That wife is so lost. She must be born again. There used to be a man who was preaching who says, you need injection from heaven. We are cool as sick. You have dropped your standards so, 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 so low. As a woman that you are looking for a man for your man. But listen to this scripture. 
little vessel, little little guard your vessel. You need to guard your vessel. As a child of God, you need to guard your vessel. The first thing that the Bible is talking about when it talks about guarding your vessel, you must guard your own body. The second one is that you must guard your own spouse. You must protect your spouse so that your spouse cannot fall into seeking things that are going to defile this home to be unholy. You must guard your vessel, meaning that you must accumulate, you must acquire a wife, a partner, and then protect that space. Don't do things that are going to push your partner into agreeing with nonsense. Yako. Amen. Abstain from immorality. Then the Bible says, know how to possess your vessel. You must control your bodies in a holy and a moral way. It's important that you need to control it in a holy way. Just like you are able to wake up and run four kilometers, five kilometers, you must be able to tell your body not to go for things that they are not supposed to go for. Oh, Paul, Uti, I beat my body up so that I can win the race and then so that I cannot be left behind. The last one, the Bible says, do not trespass or defraud a brother or a sister. Likuluma, number one, Likuluma, ngomcholo. This scripture. Yoguti, ukchola no munyu muntu, o munyu muntu. You are defrauding those people. You can't be a Christian with your daughter. Because that's another thing that these people who are talking polygamy are talking nonsense about. Because for you to be in a polygamic relationship, should you must defraud the other person's person. Because I'm sure you must start having a relationship with that person yeah. before Umshat. What is that? Is this not against the scripture that you are trespassing and you are defrauding a brother or a sister? Whether by invitation or you're just finding yourself there, I just fell for him. Yay! <laughs> it is wrong for anyone to fall in love with a person that is married with another person. It's wrong. I want to demolish your, your polygamic intentions right now in this church. I know some of you were thinking, ah, oh, we're already deep, hey, Puma Gleonto. Puma Gleonto. Yeah, Get yourself a person wako. Because the Bible says do not trespass and do not defraud another brother. If now, as a child of God, you go, you move away from your home, you sleep with another person, you are defrauding a brother or a sister. The Bible says it's wrong, you must not do it. Come and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. Don't even think about it. <laughs> Let me just read this scripture and then we'll go home. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being but God. If you are a when you are a man, you are a man, you are a man, you are a man, you are Here's your scripture. God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being but God. If you continue entertaining these whispers from the devil, that tells you that just because your body is designed in a particular way. It means you are trapped in a wrong body. In, in. Let me tell you. You are rejecting the instruction. You are not rejecting a human being but God. I'm not saying these things because I'm thinking these decisions that you have to make are easy. No. They are not easy. 
But God did not call us to be impure. Mfuna kuluma na lo okibita ayo manji. I want to talk to a person who is in a fat and set relationship. Talk to your person, get married. If there's a problem with your families, they're asking for too much, a higher price, ask us as a church to intervene so that we can talk to that family. Because we need to talk to these families that are unreasonable. We are not selling our children. They are already sleeping together. Have you noticed? As a Christian parent, you need to help these kids to stop, or these adults to stop staying together illegally. We must facilitate as families with Basale formally and Basale regularly. But what we as a church will not stand and say, we are not going to accept. The Bible says you cannot live together and have sex, continue having sex together without being married. You must marry. It's time, Mam Kumalo, that we should set up these appointments of all these people who are living together but not married. Talk to them and then facilitate with their families that these people must marry because I really don't understand if there's so many options in law of marrying outside community of property of protecting your what is it that makes you think it's okay to live together but you can't even use the options which are available in law because what's your rationale of staying together but not marrying is it a question of saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure you can marry outside community of property? What to Paul? Paul says, if you can't hold yourself, if you can't control yourself, marry. 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 Stop defrauding people. I'm not sure you can marry outside You must stop thinking that this man Ochola and I can support you but God cannot support you. What nonsense is that? Do you think your God is broke? Eh, eh, man, God is not broke. God can support you. You don't need a sugar daddy to support you. Our God is not broke. He's not broke. Ben 10. Hey, young people. You must stop it. Find a wife of your youth and marry her. We are using the context. Wife of your and marry her. You can learn to love mama. You can learn to five more minutes. You know, Solomon has an intimate conversation with his son in the book of Proverbs. He has an, an intimate conversation with his son. He says, son, be careful of these rich women who are smelling good. He says, you will die. Their men will kill you. Because he says, they tell you that their man is traveling and you go to their home, that man will find you and will kill you brutally. Young people, learn to live according to your means. You don't need somebody's money. I've preached about it in the same book of Thessalonica that the Bible says, tell these ones who are idling to work with their hands and pay for the food that they are eating. 
You don't have to drive what you don't afford. Wait, save money, and drive what you afford. Especially the young ones who have not been kibiting for too long, go back home. Ninan Batala, Kulman Naban Pen. Mobalentian is like it's official, but as husbands are alan. Satan. Young people, Solomon has warned us against these old women. You know, the, the most painful thing, especially about young girls who are, who are, who are, who are hooking up with, with older men, is because these older men always tell them, Guti, I am And they never leave, eh? Because I know there's a lot at stake, pension, me. Young woman, stop being lied to by this man. Trust God that he can give you what you deserve. He can give you what you deserve. Get yourself counseling, man. Get yourself out of this stronghold. Say phone, stronghold. Say path, a stronghold. Would you cut like a salagim? Hey, nigga, cut. Cut it. Send a text. Block the person. You need to... We must clean our community, Bazalwan. We must clean our community. We must clean our community. But this cleanup must start in the house of the Lord. Must start here. We can't be having our alone hiding wrongdoing here. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. Come in a million years ago, I could call Elon Funny saying Mona Shama to Tangem Bam Shatan Abantuana. But we are not rude. We are, we, are, we are saying this thing with love to save us alone. Rather, little Bible going on, Ugula is sing Kwa Sako. It's better to eat your dry bread than to eat bread which is full of Amakana. Go to Agnix and ask I was alone. We are not going to hell. We are going to heaven. The Lord is coming from for for a clean church. He's coming for umakoti or clean or or, or, or worthy. If our con we start a conversation, invite your person. This is what's a nice thing and a nice city. I'm sad. Ah, you must start that conversation. You can't be starting all. When it, somebody will pay us seven thousand cash, but I will have a conversation to go home. Unfunuk shata. Sometimes must draw a line and say, "As in baby, if as shat, yeah fine, yeah ham." Because what is this? What is this thing that we are doing? We must clean our community, man. Mazulu. Lendo yo yobsoga meli pele. That thing has destroyed communities. Lendo yobsoga usha deal meli pele. You can't be having multiple partners. You are married. Stay away from these things. These tendencies must fall. They are the ones which are destroying our community. Like when you read the statistics in this country about how many children live with their actual parents, you'll be shocked. And most of it is caused by these multiple partners. This sugar daddy, sugar mama phenomenon which are in our community. It's very sad when you hear people saying, I just want his child. What kind of propositions are these? I just want to have his child. Hey, no nonsense. That nonsense must fly out of your, of your, of your, of your, of your, of your head. You can't be asking people for their key. Oh, shut down, man. This is how our society is messed up. We're having all these single parents thing when the parents are somewhere in their families. Because we're having a lot of girls and a lot of boys. They can't control their bodies. They can't control their vessels. 
Can you stand up on our feet? I want us to pray this morning. Uh, I want us to, I don't want to embarrass anyone, but I've come to understand that the altar is significant to help people because there's an anointing in the altar. So the Bible says, what I said this morning was, there is a standard that God expects from us. It is the will of God for us to be sanctified. We need to avoid sexual immorality because it's causing chaos in our communities. Do you know how rich our country would be if we did not have this nonsense? Wow, my single parents, single children. You know all this money that goes to 17 million people getting grants in our country? 17 million. Because of reckless sexual behavior. Mara, have you ever thought about it to say, the government is paying all this money because of people who can't control themselves, mostly. Reckless sexual behavior. I know okay, the middle ones are saying, no, say, but afford, I bet. You are still reckless. With that affordability, you are still reckless. It must stop. Come on, say, it stops with me. I was we can't be that community that keeps on doing the same mistakes again and again and again and again and again and again. Black child, these things must stop. Young girls, your ambition cannot be in uh -uh. That's a wrong ambition. You're a cousin. How difficult a life is for that boy child that you are raising. One of my issues are my daddy issues. We are tired of young people who keep on going to our counseling unnecessary because of the behavior of us, the parents. Things that we could have avoided. Because it's very selfish, this thinking of thinking, I just want to have a child. Um, do an identity, an identity crisis. What are you bringing us here on earth? You brought us a lot of problems with your selfish ambitions. Just want to have him. He has him to He said, Here, when I want to go to life, you do want to eat on Instagram. No, get a puppy, get a number, get a robot. But I'm saying it with love. I love you. If we don't say these things, our community is going to continue being. It's just like this thing of just living so easy. Like, they are my spouses, those who are married. I must make it difficult for a divorce, you know? It can't be that easy. Like, I got you, I live. It can't be that easy. Marage, Mam Kumalo, Babu Shamanala, Mam Kava, Naonga, my elders, and Gons. You know, the thing that's troubling me more than anything these days, it's I'm a daughter and I'm the Knicks. And I understand how that is hurting their families. I think as a church, uh, Babu Suisa as a church, we must have a project of helping men. Because you know, each time you talk to couples, you get that sense of it. These women have a genuine concern. We do not want to mix. We are not comfortable. Unfortunately, some some of these women they are reacting in a very wrong way. But it's true. Now, when you start reflecting, you counting how many men you actually know who are doing nothing in pillows now. You realize that hey, if this is the reason you are not family, most of us are not family. So maybe one of the things we must discuss it. 
we must start by doing assessment your skills is now going to win but we must also do an assessment and check with ama daughter in particular ayenzani if we need to say lenga yenzi nix we need to do a plan mele sibe nomzamo ukuthi how do we help one another because you know there's something that pastor lemon pierre during the men's thing he spoke about he spoke about the problem of young boys being feminized by the powerful figures who are women in the families uh, to say that we need to be careful about the feminizing of boys in our families because some of this feminizing it's informed by legislation there's a lot of opportunities for women employment equity favors women however it ends up creating a different figure who is a model for our boys in our families and then where our women they are more superhero like type of characters than us there's nothing wrong with women being powerful but it becomes a problem when the effect of it leads to feminization of boys where actually the boys desire to be more like their mothers than like their fathers what kind of a generation are we going to produce of boys like that and this thing is caused by lack of initiative from our communities actually these are the results of apartheid actually that's what our enemy wanted to achieve breed useless men who are too compliant and affect the next generation after them we must deliberately rise up to help one another as men to be able to stand like i'm not talking about men who are looking for our handouts no 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 we must not give any handout to any man we must give work we must give initiative we must give opportunity ama dota asukume ayimele eba sa sizo wane problem is so inside you are going to have weak men it's going to be even worse in the church if you are going to have just weak men in the church it's going to feminize our boys that's not what we want to see because the bible says jesus grew in stature he grew in wisdom he grew in favor with god and favor with men that's how our boys must rise i want to pray can you close your eyes baba sishumayele izwi lakho sikhulume loku osinspire ngako ukuthi sikusho sithembekile kokwakho we know that there will be some fire coming from other ends especially because of the criticisms that we have unleashed on some ring, wrong things that some of your people are beginning to say as if they are acceptable standards of your word when they are not and we know that you have created Adam and Eve a man and a woman in the name of Jesus we pray that we may be able to raise standards and we live according to your standards we pray that you sanctify us that oh god we may live according to your sanctity according to your holiness for you said in your word be holy for i god i am holy we pray against sexual immorality in our communities amongst all your people in jesus name we repent for not living right we repent for not applying our your standards in our lives in terms of our sexuality in Jesus name we pray that we be holy that we live right in the name of Jesus we pray that you help us to control our own bodies and you help us to control our own families in Jesus name we pray for a mishato according to your will in Jesus name we pray for those who are living together without being married that oh god they may fix things and be married and get your blessing and the blessing of their families upon them in jesus name we pray for these decisions that your people are making in the name of jesus that things can be well in them 
We're praying, oh God, for the boy child. In Jesus' name. May they not be feminized. May they live according to how you have created them. In Jesus' name. But we pray that, oh God, you help us to help men to rise. To help men to stand. To help men to work. To help men, oh God, not to give up, but to continue doing good. In Jesus' name. We pray for strength of men in this church. In Jesus' name. And we pray for the support of all our women in Jesus' mighty name. We give you the praise. We thank you for holiness. We pronounce your church as holy. You are coming back, Jesus, for a holy church. We pronounce purity amongst our young people. They shall be able to wait until they marry before they indulge in sex in Jesus' name. We pray for the boy child to make the same commitment as the girl child is making the same commitment. Simelana no moya wokibita ekamelen go se tu Jesu. Simelana no moya wokujola abantu abashadile ekamelen go se tu Jesu. In Jesus mighty name we thank you for holiness. We pronounce holiness. 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 But also God we pray for restoration of your people as they repent let their regret not kill them in Jesus name. May your peace that passeth by all human understanding guard their hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. in their hearts in Jesus name. In the name of Jesus, we shall not live like pagans. We shall not have passions and lusts like pagans, but we shall live as you will and as you desire in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we shall not reject your instruction. We're accepting it and we are practicing it in Jesus' name. We thank you for doctrine that will be followed by duty, for precepts that will be followed by practice in the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify your holy name and everybody say amen. Can you do the grace? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.